Hello, class. Here's an example looking at 2D motion of a projectile object with acceleration due to gravity. A woman strikes a golf ball which leaves the ground with an initial velocity of 42 meters per second at an angle of 32 degrees above the horizontal. Determine the ball's horizontal range of travel, maximum height, and the horizontal distance traveled when it is 15 meters above the ground. Again, we have a problem solving strategy. We're going to identify the concepts involved. We'll sketch up a drawing with our coordinate system and signs. And we'll go on to solve it and then reflect upon the answers to see if they make sense. So here's our sketch. We've got an initial velocity of 42 meters per second. And we can resolve that into our, our x and our y components. We defined our positive x axis to our right and positive y axis is up. We're starting at a position of 0, 0. And we've got an acceleration that's downwards at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's make a little sketch over here of just the motion itself. So it's going to be a parabolic motion. And we're interested in a couple of things. We're interested in this range, this full range. I'm going to call that xg as we'll see. We're interested in this maximum height, and we're interested in the horizontal distance when it is 15 meters above the ground. Drawing that on our position time graphs, we've gained of a parabolic motion for our y curve, a quadratic. We're interested in the horizontal range of travel. That takes us to here. So the time when it hits the ground, where we've got a y equal to zero. We're interested in the maximum height. That's this location here, y max. We'll have that occurring at a time tm. And we're interested in the horizontal distance when it is 15 meters above the ground. And so we'll call that a t15. So that's when the y is equal to 15 meters. And so if we look at the corresponding times down here, remember that our x motion is a uniform motion. And so it'll extend out with a constant slope until it reaches that time there such that it hits the ground. So the y motion buys the time, as I always say. And so here is when it'll stop, and that will be its maximum range. So this is x maximum, or xg, if we use the same, superscript, sub, same scripts that I've used over here, tg. The time when it hits 15 meters, and the time when it hits its maximum height. Let's identify our quantities. At a time t0 equal to 0, we've got an x0 equal to 0 a v naught x equal to v naught cos of theta, that 42 meters per second, cos of 32 degrees, which will give us a value of 35.6 meters per second. And our acceleration in the x along the x-axis is 0. For y, we've got y naught is also 0. Our v naught y is equal to v naught sine of theta, using this theta here, as I should have pointed out. This is then 42 meters per second times sine of 32 degrees, or a value of 22.3 meters per second. And our acceleration in the y-axis is a negative g. So what are we trying to solve for? In part a, we're interested in time tg, which we don't know. But we do know at that point that we have a position of 0. And we're trying to find the x at that position. Or for part b, we're looking for y equal to y max at an unknown time tm. But we do know here that we'll have a velocity of 0. And lastly, in part c, 
we're looking for some time ty5, 1, 5, I'll call it, where y is a positive 1.5 meters, and we want the horizontal distance at that location. So for the first part, we'll notice that in each of these cases, we don't know the time, but we do know something about the y motion, either the y position or the y velocity. And knowing that the y motion buys us time, we'll be able to use some of that information. In two of these cases, we're looking for an x position. And remembering that the y motion buys us time, we're looking for the equation that will give us some information about the time. So if we look at that equation that describes the y position and the time, we'll notice that we have the acceleration due to gravity, we have the initial velocity, we know that y0 is equal to zero, and we're looking in the case here where y is equal to zero. So that should give us the, time, the information we need about time so that we can go on and solve for xg. In the second case, we don't know time, but we know the position and we know the velocity. So we can relate those two using this equation, where we know our acceleration due to gravity, we know our initial velocity, and we know in this case that we have a vy of zero at the peak height. And so we should be able to solve for y max. In the last case, again, we don't have the time, but we want an x position. Let's again look to this equation. We always know our acceleration due to gravity. We do have an initial velocity. We know that our initial position is zero, and we know the y position in this case. So we should be able to find x15. Let's go ahead and solve for those three scenarios. For part A, here's what we had come up with. So recall that we know a y, we know v y naught. We've got this value is zero, and this value is zero. And from that, then, I get two solutions for time. t equal to 0 and t equal to a negative 2vy0 divided by ay. Substituting in, and so I get a second solution for time of 4.54 seconds. We'll do a quick check on our units. We've got meters per second divided by meters per second squared, which is going to leave me with seconds. So the first time is when it starts, and y is, all, is equal to zero at that point, but it's also equal to zero when it hits the ground 4.54 seconds later. So I'm looking at these two time points that I've solved for in terms of y. Quadratic function is a function of, y is a quadratic function of time then I can go and use that second time point to find out when, what the x position is when it hits the ground. The initial position is zero, and I'm now just looking at that constant 35.6 meters per second as it moves to the right times the time from up above, and I get a value of 161.6 meters, or to three significant digits, 162 meters. Go back and check my units, meters per second times second, and I'm left with meters. Excellent. Seems like a reasonable value. It's positive, and the units all work out. Here are the expressions that I identified for part B. Again, we know our acceleration due to gravity, we know our initial velocity, and we know Vy here is equal to zero. So solving for delta Y, I'm going to substitute in that initial velocity, 22.3 meters per second, all squared, and my negative acceleration. 
and out of that I'll see that I get a value of 25.3 meters. So it goes to a maximum value of 25.3, a positive 25.3 meters. So I identified these parameters in equation for part C. I know my acceleration due to gravity, I know my initial velocity, I know that my initial position was zero, and I know the position here at positive 15 meters for this problem. So I'm going to rewrite this equation in the form to solve a quadratic equation because I have three different terms to my equation. Set that all equal to zero where this is my a term, my b term, and my c term. Also noting that I simplified this to zero. t will then have the form of a negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac and setting in some values. So solving I get two values for t. t equal to 0 0.82 seconds and t equal to 3.72 seconds. My distance then, based on a constant velocity, I will again have two values because of those two different times. So I've got a 35.6 meters per second times 0 0.82 seconds and I've got 35.6 meters per second times 3.72 seconds. And from that I get two values, 29.2 meters and 132 meters. Now both of these answers are valid. They both correspond to times when the y position is 15 meters. So let's look back at the figure. So the solution for part C gave us two times. This time here and this time here. In the same way that part A gave us two times when y equals zero, this time and this time, at, at t equal to zero and at tg, we also got two times when y was equal to 15. And even though I didn't point it out earlier, the mathematical solution told us about it, told us that there were two times that we should be looking for when the y position will be equal to 15 meters. And so that second time is this one right here when we'll get this x position and we'll get this x position. Both of, that, both of them coming out of that mathematical solution for part c. And the only other thing we haven't shown then is that time tm when we saw y reach its maximum point. So those are the locations or the items, the quantities that we were looking for. We can also notice that by symmetry we're looking for two points such as this. This one occurred at 0.82 seconds and this one occurred at 3.72 seconds. And so you might expect that this difference between when it hits the ground at y equal to zero will be similar to this distance here. And indeed, if we take 4.54 seconds, which was this time here, and we subtract 3.72 seconds, we get a value of 0.82 seconds. So this time, 3.72 is just 0.82 seconds before it hits the ground, and this one is 0.82 seconds after it was at the ground. And just by symmetry, that's what we would expect. So that also checks out.